Hello there, short friends. This is going to be a quick video about a Hataya Kitetsu, just some supplemental information to add on to the review that I did some time ago. Now this uh, is a used Hataya Kitetsu. It has had a fresh sharpening job on it. This polish is not original, but it gives you some window into kind of the differential hardening or what type of hamon these, uh, these swords might have uh, on, on it. And one thing that I would say is consistent across all the Kitetsus that I've seen is that they always have this very wide, thick, purpose-built, intentional laser beam tatami competition cutter style. It's quite a mouthful, but uh, they're purpose-built lawnmowers, right? They're, they're intended to do exceedingly well at cutting tatami. And there's a lot of variation in terms of the hilt, the saya, uh, whether or not they come with bohi, the general size, but this dimensional shape here is, it seems pretty consistent. They're always very wide. In terms of thickness, I would say this one's really about as thick as your average sword, even though it's, it's a bit longer. Uh, and they don't have a ton of distal taper, typically. There is some, certainly, but there's there's not a lot. I'll include dimensions for this blade uh, down in the description below. But while there is variation and none of them are, are really, that I've seen, the same, it's not as though they have one series and it comes in the same color with the same furniture. They're all a little bit different. Uh, the main thing that you can always kind of take with a grain of salt, or, or I suppose take for granted, is that they're all really intentionally built cutters for tatami mat kind of specific stuff. Not that they can't cut anything else, but uh, they are very purpose-built to being very exceptional tatami mat cutters for competition or more martial arts study. Now, this one uh, has been used substantially. It's got some funny stories with it, actually, as well, and you can see that it's it's got, you know, maybe a slight curve. I don't know if you can even make that out. It's hard to see in my camera. Uh, the planes on it are, are pretty, pretty good. Uh, anyway, long and the short of it, this sword actually does have some funny stories. Note that I suppose from here down, it's been customized uh, and has a few other interesting bits. So this is an antique Suba. Uh, it has a little bit of, of kind of rattle to it, uh, but that's not too hard to fix. Anyway, it's, it's an antique. I don't believe this is original to the, the Kitetsu. And these fittings as well as this handle have been redone. And this is Fred Lohman Tsunami. I think this is really maybe an interesting thing to show how the Lohman Tsunami ages when you use it a lot. This has been used substantially by a lot of different practitioners. There's probably a lot of uh, sweat and tears in in this handle right here maybe a little bit of blood as well uh, <laughs> though I'm not sure about that uh, you can see though that there's there's maybe this one little section down here that's kind of original uh, in terms of the color and shape of this kind of dark brown Loman tsunami the other is just really caked with the oil from hands and it has this kind of tacky it's not I won't call it sticky or slippery but it, it definitely aids almost in the grip like it, it really kind of uh, rests in your hand and, and just feels very stably uh, kind of placed in there. It has uh, a grippy sensation without being gross, even though it's the oil from many hands. Uh, it definitely definitely feels good in the hand, actually. So uh, the Ito is still very, very tight. It's, it's nice. It's well put together. You can hear it rattles around a little bit, but again, something that's pretty easily corrected. The uh, other bit is that the Fuchikashira on this one, I don't believe are original, nor are the Manuki. The Manuki, I, I think, are actually antique as well. But that's because somebody had this part redone, so it's not original to the blade. Uh, the, the thing to note, though, is that the part that is original to the blade is, is the blade itself, and it maintains that Kitetsu shape for performance tatami cutting. This one is actually 30 and uh, 3 quarter inches long. I think it's much longer than average sword, and also has a 10 and a half inch handle. Kind of a, not a combination you see in, in production swords very often, but actually one that I, I like. It's, it's well suited to me, and this blade has kind of a funny story. A long, well not a long time ago, but maybe a long time ago, I bought this sword from a practitioner who had used it, and I don't know if they were the original owner or not. And I remember, I think I pestered him for a really long time. For those of you that have dealt with me before, you know I'm a cheap, thrifty bastard. And I pestered enough and finally uh, got to, to play with this sword. I can't remember if this was the first or second Hataya Kitetsu that I owned. But I did, uh, I, honestly, like I played with it, but I wasn't studying Toyama Ryu at the time. And I think I had less of an appreciation for what this sword was. Uh, later on, I resold it, but oddly, I sold it back to the same person that sold it to me because they missed it. It's, as, as I noted before, kind of an unconventional size. If you're a taller guy and you want a longer sword, uh, this is not, not a common length. And if you prefer a shorter handle, when you do find a longer sword, it's pretty uncommon to find one with a 10 and a half inch handle. So uh, anyway, it went back to the same person that sold it to me, who then sold it later on to another practitioner in my local area who's, who's part of the same Toyama group. And uh, 
they asked me to, to sell it. So it's funny that it's kind of bounced between me a few times. The only comical part will now be if the original seller that sold it to me ends up buying it again. Anyway, it's, it's funny how small the sword world can be at times. Uh, regardless though, I did actually do a little bit of cutting with this, not a substantial amount. The important thing to note is that it's not mine. I don't want to devalue it, so I don't feel comfortable really uh, even cutting water bottles where I could I could nick the the thick edge of a, a bottle and potentially cause cause a problem. I don't want to risk it when it's not my property and I'm kind of uh, selling it for somebody else. So uh, this one though, I did take to a pool noodle because really a pool noodle isn't going to hurt your blade. It's not going to scratch it. It's not going to uh, deform it. It's not going to really do anything to it, but what it will do is, I suppose, dictate how well you are moving the, the sword, how well the angles come out, and, you know, if the, the sword is sharp. And what I can tell you about cutting pool noodles is that it, this sword is extremely sharp and was the easiest sword to cut with the day that I was cutting uh, pool noodles and such. So I have an example here. You can see here's the Hidaya Kotetsu moving through. Without context, maybe it doesn't really look that impressive because a pool noodle isn't a hard target. But if your sword isn't ridiculously sharp, but if your angles aren't adequate, then, you know, if those two things aren't working in unison, then the pool noodle kind of laughs in your face and they can be a, a deceptively difficult target to make it through. Uh, however, as I compare this to other swords when I try to cut pool noodles, you can see that the Hatai Kotetsu, despite its mass being one of the heaviest swords I was moving around that day, uh, certainly seemed to move through the, the targets better than really anything else with more control. Uh, the mass, move, you know, let the sword do the work and it was still, uh, you know, despite its size and weight, uh, reasonable enough for me to control and stop and, you know, just kind of let, let the sword do the work. It's where other things that lack the edge uh, or the geometry to, to really be a performance purpose-built cutter um, really, really did not do the same thing. Either they lacked in sharpness and I had to muscle my way through it, uh, or, you know, I was just bad at it. One of the two. Anyway, uh, that's all I really have for you. It was just a quick video to show, you know, here's the Kitetsu cutting just a little bit in comparison to other swords on the same type of target. Not a target that's going to showcase its aptitude or ability, uh, nor a practitioner that could do so. But uh, consistently, they have very wide cutting blades. If you happen to see one of these, then, you know, I suppose you can have some assurances that it is a very intentionally built, well-performing cutting blade if you're into cutting tatami or I suppose pool noodles in the backyard. That's all I have for you, and uh, I hope it's been mildly interesting. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.